Hey, welcome to the channel. As a lot of you guys know, I've been driving for Uber and Lyft recently. I started about a month ago. So today, I thought I would cover the top 10 ways that I think you can save money on Uber and Lyft. Make sure you stick around for all top 10 because if you combine all of these tips, you could possibly save up to 25%. Also, do me a huge favor and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already and like the video. Thanks. All right, the first tip is to check out some of the subscription plans available from both Uber and Lyft. Uber has a ride pass that you can purchase for $24.99 in some markets, and it will do a few things for you. It will guarantee you some savings. Uh, you get price protection for the busy times, uh, and you can save up to 15% on every ride. So check that out and see if it's available in your market. Lyft has a similar thing. Uh, those prices range from $15 a month to all the way up to $299 a month. Really, these probably only work out for you and save you money if you spend over $200 a month. And I know to some of you that's going to sound like a whole lot, but for people who are replacing a car payment with Lyft or Uber, $200 a month is not that bad. So at that point, it starts to make sense. Two, do a shared ride if possible. If you're a single rider and it's available in your market, you can select to do a shared ride option. That will allow the driver to pick up another passenger who has a similar route to you. Uh, it might not be a good option for you if you have a lot of luggage or a lot of uh, groceries or something uh, if the car doesn't have enough room. So that is a caveat to that, but it can save you uh, probably five to 10% and it will just take a little bit longer. So keep that in mind as well. Three, promotions. Keep an eye out for promotions. Uh, if you just Google some right now, you can find that Lyft will give you up to $25 off 10 rides. Uber has a similar deal for new riders. So check those out and take advantage of them. Number four, only call for the ride when you're ready. Some people will call quite a bit ahead of time. And in my market, we can be there in just a minute or two. And the rider can get penalized and have to pay extra money if excessive wait time is charged and that starts at two minutes. Uh, I frequently have to wait on riders and they get charged. So just call for the ride when you're ready, especially if you're in a busy area. Uh, we've got a popular street with a lot of bars on it that I'll pick people up in. So a lot of the Uber driver and Lyft drivers are actually sitting in like a wait zone so they can be at the bar in one to two minutes. So don't, don't do it and then think you're going to pay your check and come out like five or seven minutes later, you're going to get charged a few extra dollars for that. So that's a real easy one is just don't call for the ride until one to two minutes before you're ready at most. Number five, have realistic drop off and pick up locations. I actually learned this tip from a rider who told me that they live near a popular stadium uh, where I drive. And if they put their house in, uh, as a drop-off location, it's going to charge them more, but then when we get close to the location, uh, I'm not allowed to drive there because the police will have it blocked off. So they still get charged the premium price. Same way with the pickup locations. I'll pick up from the same stadium and people will put the actual stadium as their pickup location, where if they would just walk one to two blocks away, uh, they'd get a much faster pickup from me and the price would be a lot cheaper. So keep those drop off and pick up locations realistic and you'll save a lot of time and money. Number six, use an exact address of a home or business instead of dropping a pin. I have a lot of riders who will drop a pin instead of giving an exact business location. And this can be very problematic in highly dense urban areas, uh, say like a business district. If you drop a pin, I don't know what side of the building you're on, and that GPS coordinate may be off 50 to 100 yards, which doesn't sound like much, but like I said, it may put me on the wrong side of the building, and you'll incur a wait time, and you'll just get worse service. So if you put the exact building in, uh, Uber and Lyft often know if those have multiple pickup points. For instance, uh, one of the buildings that I do frequent pickups on has a north, south, east, and west location. And the rider can specify which one of those they want to be picked up and dropped off at. So uh, they get a lot better service than somebody who just drops a pin. So uh, remember, use an address when possible. That will save you time and get you better service. Number seven. Don't forget items in the car and don't puke in someone's Uber or Lyft. If you forget something and have to contact technical support, 
uh, which you probably would have to to get your item back, it's going to cost you at least $15. Uh, the other thing, it seems like common sense, but for a lot of drunk people, may not be. Don't puke or vomit in someone's car. That's going to cost you probably a minimum of $100, and I've seen all the way up to $250. So there, uh, just a little bit of common sense goes a long way, but it is easy to forget something, so that's an easy way to save $15. Number eight. Use multi-stop if you need to make multiple stops and they're real quick instead of two separate trips. I'm often surprised at the number of riders that don't know about this, but I had a guy in the car last night who just needed to stop off at a uh, building and pick something up and he was going to do two trips and I said, hey, are you just going to be a few minutes? And he said, oh yeah, I just need to run and pick something up. So I showed him how to add a second stop on his trip. Uh, that needs to be kept to less than three minutes or you will incur a wait time charge, but it's still probably cheaper than doing two trips if you can keep that to just a few minutes. Uh, there's an overhead charge basically for every time you make a new call. So if you combine those trips, you avoid one of those extra surcharges. So that's a good way to save probably 10 to 15% if, it does have, uh, if your trip does have more than one stop on it. Number nine is Uber Cash. If you use Uber very much at all, uh, you can save some money by putting some cash in your account. You can save 5% if you'll put $100 in. Uh, and right now, from what I can tell, there is no expiration on this. Uh, it does go down if you put less money in it. For $50, you get 3% off, and for $25, you get 2% off. But hey, that's free money if you use it very much at all. And from what I can tell, you can combine it with some of these other tips. So hey, take advantage of the free 5% if you can. Number 10, avoid surge pricing. Uh, I think Lyft calls this prime time, but basically they're going to charge you more because there's an influx of rider requests and uh, demand far exceeds, exceeds the number of drivers. So a lot of times if you can just wait 10 to 20 minutes, you can avoid that surge and it save you probably a good 20% sometimes. Or if you can walk a block or two away from the source of congestion. So for instance, if you're at a stadium, if you'll walk a couple blocks away, you'll get a better, faster pickup and save a decent bit of money. So avoid surge if you can and save some money. Well guys, I hope some of you find those tips helpful. Uh, if you combine all those tips, you could save up to 25% of, or so on your Uber bill. Uh, if you can just use a couple of those tips, you can probably save 10% easily. So do me a favor. If you haven't already done so, please like and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it. Also, if you've got tips that I left out, please leave them in the comments. I may do a follow-up video. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.